Hello and how are you? My name is Mohind Obad and I welcome you to our seventh lecture of creating a, a complete a hotel management uh, system using plain PHP, MySQL and HTML just without any framework. So uh, we have been uh, following this series beginning from the first one now in the seventh part. Uh, so if this is your first video to watch, I recommend you to go and watch the really the very first video on this uh, playlist on this series. Uh, all right, without my say, let's go straight to where we stopped at in the previous lecture. Uh, but as you know, always do 40 minutes, so I'll start our counter and then we dive into our today's business. Okay, so yesterday or in the previous lecture, we stopped at this level of uh, coming into room categories and click on create room. So here we are able to enter the room name and here pick the what the fo the the photo of the category. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and uh, and do what and open our database and go and check um, let's go ahead and check the uh, the hotel and see what field we need to add there. So we come here to hotel pro. And then we come to the room categories. So I've already finished the name, the details, and then the photo. And we are remaining the template. So some different rooms can have different, I mean, some different categories can have different templates of a presentation. So I'm going to have like four templates. So these templates are going to be in a kind of a drop down, mm -hmm. going to be a select or a drop down. So I'm going to do a field that is going to be managing uh, drop downs. So I finished the field of. Uh, a name i will finish the field of photo now let's go ahead and do the field of uh, that can be able to do a drop down so what i'm going to do i'm going to add here just a, a third what a third day a third day uh a third section so let's go ahead and uh, go to our admin categories create and then come here so we're going to do another one for select now so i'll come here on top here so these are six six so if i divide by four I make this one by four, it means that uh, we shall have possibly three fields that can fit there. So if you come and refresh here, you see that now they are they are spending a space, a space of three. So I can just simply come and copy this one and then put it here. So you see it is now four. So now the main three will now uh, fit there properly. So we're going to have the, 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 the template and here the photo. All right. So this template, uh, we can just simply come and change this one to room template okay but uh, it's going to be a drop down it's going to be a select drop down okay so what we're going to do we're going just to create another one uh, a text or an input of a drop down so i can call it uh drop down input or select input okay so let's do that so we shall come to our utils uh sorry we shall come to our functions file this is the functions file and then I'll search for uh, a text input. Okay, so I can change this text input. Let me copy it and I create the one for what? For select. So let me copy it and then paste it here. Then I'll come and call this one and change the name to select input. So this one, the one that's going to be responsible for select. So almost everything is going to be the same, only that um, the logic of select is going to change. Okay, so I can come here. And remove this one so you can just simply come and say um, select and then you put if the value is there I put there the value I'm going to explain it don't worry and then if the feedback is there I can okay this is that right, let me let me explain it let me explain it so um, here is select and then we're going to have uh, here is select and then we're going to have uh, the classes so everything is just the same if the attributes are there attributes are there everything is just the same like that we did before however this is just select and it's having a closing here here now here we're going to put a what a drop down okay we're going to put a drop down for the for the options okay for the, the drop down for the options so let's design that drop down so we shall come here on top and just simply say uh drop down equals nothing by default okay so after doing so i uh, will come here and uh, say uh so our first value in the okay so our first 
value in the drop down can be maybe select uh, that particular value. So let's put this one in the as the first value of drop of a drop down. Okay. So it is having a value of nothing or can we remove value, but uh, it has select and then you pass there the label. So to pass there the label, I can just simply do like this and then I put there the label like that. So it will be select that label that will have been given to us. All right, so after doing so, I'm going to check if uh, uh, I'm going to add here another variable called drop down options, or I can say maybe uh, options. Okay, so I can say maybe say options, options, options. I make it to be an empty array. Okay, an empty array by default. So in this uh, parameters that will be set, I'll be sending the options. Okay, I'll be sending the options in here. So I'm going to check if option is set and if it is an array. So I shall just simply come and say uh, check if uh, option is set and is array. Okay, so I'll go ahead and say and say if okay if and then I open bracket and say is set. So is set. I go ahead and say uh, params or parameters. Okay, if we set the parameter of array our options. Okay, and then I can add there another condition here. Say and and what and the uh, is array is array is array like this. Okay, if is array. So after doing so, if both two those two conditions are, are what are, are are correct, then I'll go ahead and loop. Uh, and then I'll go ahead. Let me get this All right. So I'll go ahead and get those options and put them in this options uh, Variable, okay, so those are options. I'll go them and I put them here So in here down here. I'm just going to come on bottom here here on bottom here and just loop Okay, so I'm just simply going to say uh, for each And then I pass the options, okay Make this one key one and make sure that you put this one as option because my mess with this and, and the other value that you have on top there. So I go ahead, I get the key. So I check if is selected. Okay, now so I go ahead and say if uh, so I go ahead and say selected equals to nothing. So selected equal to nothing. So I go ahead and say if the value, the value uh, that Someone will have passed to me here. If that value is same as the, the key, is the same as the key, then I'll make that as what? As selected. I'll mark that one as selected. Then I go ahead and say drop down. I go ahead and I concatenate. So it is full stop equals dot equals. So I concatenate, I add in the previous value. So I look through those options. So I open here uh, my what? My brackets. I mean, my, 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 my quotations and then I open less than sign and then put option and then put value so the key is the value and then I put I close the key as the value as you see it there and then I come and say if it's selected I put the other selected value so if this value is selected this word will selected will be put here and then I also close here so here I've closed the first option value and then I go ahead and pass the option itself so the option is now the key that the, the value that someone will be sending as a value of an array and then I close the option So when I look like that and then I come and put this option here now All right, so the drop down I come and put it here Come and put it here between the what between the select I put here the drop down So I hope you've seen that and I hope you've understood it. Let me explain it again. I say uh, it is just like the other input field that we are doing. In fact, I just duplicated the one that I was doing And then I went ahead and created the options array and make it empty and then if is array in parameter here I go ahead and uh, Check if options are what if options are set Okay, if options if options are set and 
is an array because we may need to check before we get um, errors so it's an array i go ahead and loop and put those options in the what in this um in this options key so after doing so uh on bottom here so everything almost remain the same the name and the rest here in bottom i go ahead and loop through the options okay remember the options if they are not there it is an empty array so it will not run error so i go ahead and uh, look through those options i get the key and the value itself so here i check if i make by default i say selected equals to nothing so i check if the value is equal to the key remember the value is the value that is being passed if the value is equal to the key i go ahead and say selected equals to selected so this selected will make this field to be selected or to be selected if the value is there and then I say drop down and drop down, you know, by default it's having select the name of the value there. Can even remove this word value. Okay. So I go ahead and put the value as the key. So here is just a concatenation. So this uh, quotation mark is closing this one. And then these uh, values that the HTML uh, double quotes. And then I open, I add another. So I put the key here and then I put... If it's selected, the selected word will be there, others will be nothing, and then I put the options. So that's it, and then I come and put that drop down here, in here, All right? I put the drop down in there. So that is it, uh, that is it. Let's go ahead and refresh now. So to refresh, I'll go ahead and copy, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and copy this select, the name of the method select input. Then I come to create, and then come and change this one to select input. <coughs> room template so if I, let me remove water focus i can make it required but i remove water focus so if i come and refresh you'll see everything is fine and here we're having some kind of what select which is just simply saying select a what select a template so let's go ahead and pass options okay so i can go ahead and pass options so i say options options and then i go ahead and pass so an array square array like that so i can just simply now go ahead and give so you make sure that you pass an array options an array so i go ahead and say maybe uh template one to be template one okay so this will be the value this will be the key so i give maybe template one template two template three and template four so that's the main template that you have. So that's it. So if I come and refresh here, you see everything is okay. When I click here, uh, the templates are not coming. <laughs> let's find out. So here, options. All right, the template is not coming. Let's find out why. Uh, so let's come here back to our functions. Let's see if the options are being set. All right, so we can just simply come here and uh, try to do some check, it, check up and see if options are there. So I can just simply come and say, uh, die, uh, die, uh, say maybe here, All right? So if you do that and refresh, you see die here will come up here. And then let's go ahead and put now this one here in options. You see if your options are actually set, you see the options are not being shown. So why? I think so. Here, how do you call it? Options like this. Let's make sure that also is options. Yeah, that is okay. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and see why it is not showing. So uh, let's see. First of all, uh, is set. Let me uh, just simply come here and do some um, display echo uh, pre tag and then just print out the param so if i dump the parameter you'll see that we have options 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 it is there i have can I access the options let me put it here come and refresh options it is there well accessible uh -huh. so uh it is options and make sure it is oh yeah i've seen the mistake i've seen the mistake let me remove all this i've seen the mistake so here yeah, the word is set i'm supposed to remove it supposed to be is options just i mean is array and then you pass the option yeah that's what the mystic i was doing so if i refresh right now 
uh, you'll see our drop down is coming okay you see our drop down is coming so you do it once and then you reuse it many times you see our drop down is there our drop down is coming so that is beautiful and then this is the name so here you can be able to enter the data there all right so let's go i hope that you have understood that you can pause the video or you can slow it down to make sure that you understand everything how i've done it okay so let's go back let's go back to create and then uh we're going to uh we're going now to put a submit button okay we're going to put a submit button here all right so i'll come here uh i'll come to the bottom let me come to the create and then i'll come to the bottom of this form of this form then i'm going to put a submit button all right submit button okay so uh, yep so copilot has put it for me so let me refresh so this is our submit button so it is just simply um a row and then we have a class of 12 md12 and then we have a button it submit and then say we have create so since we can have edit you can just make this one what to be submit all right so that's it uh so let's go ahead and maybe put here mt2 mtmd1 i think that is okay so maybe we can always make it md2 so it can be a little bit bottom here so there you go so there we go that is a simple form and it is beautiful and lovely so all that you need is now to feed in their data and then start uh, inserting the data in the database all right so let's go ahead and do that now um so let's go ahead and do that so uh, what you're going to do remember our action is submitting with the same page all right let's try to see if it is submitting on the same page refresh so i have this plugin called fake filler this fake filler it will help you to autofill um your your forms you can it is a google chrome extension just simply search fake filler like this so this fake filler it will uh, you can find it there fake filler extension it is here just go ahead and add it to your chrome this one here it will help you to fake fill the data in your what in your in your in in, in your forms when you're testing something all right so let me first put in my phone here my computer is heating up all right so uh so there i just press your fake filler it fills for me uh, the, whatever i want so let me submit when i submit so it is not submitting to the endpoint all right so i isn't doing that let us just simply remove it and you see let's try to remove and you see if i remove everything actions i refresh i do fake fill i submit so it is submitting now so you are supposed, you are supposed to remove this action in order for it to submit on the same thing so it is submitting right now okay so it is submitting so if i refresh here i'll see that it's submitting data so what you're going to do right now now is to what you're going to do right now is to is to now receive the data okay so let's go ahead and come here uh what you shall do uh, it's going to be much more like the register so first of all you shall need to require what the so i can come like actually i can come on top like on top 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 okay so these are room categories create room categories so i can come here on top here um on top and then after doing so um i can come here on top and then i import the the functions i require the functions and then i come back here to what to register and i just see how it is done here register so I can just simply copy this and see if it set the method. If the method is uh, so, if the method that is being submitted is post, then I can just simply die here and say time to post data, something like that. So yeah, that's it. So if I refresh here, we'll see time to post data. So let's dump whatever has come. Uh, so only maybe here we forgot to put the we change to change the name of a template. So we come to template name is supposed to be template like this all right so uh, let's go back last i'll just press enter and then i come and fake fill or oh, then submit so you see there we go 
so let's come back let's come back here and then i'll go ahead and do some damping so let me go ahead and say echo i say echo and say pre-tag and then say print underscore post so i'll see what is has come in post if i refresh here this is the data that has come through the post All right yeah so what you need again just to make sure that the name is required and then um the what the 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 template yeah so we can check that by doing like they already did it here if it's not required return back the user okay so uh so i can just simply come and say here i just come on top here say check if name is sub is submitted so copilot will do that for me so i just simply say if is not set yeah i can just simply copy this anyway I can just simply copy this so i just simply come and put here post and put name if it's not set the name and the name is empty i can simply put session of errors you see you still remember this one form errors and i pass here name and then i say name is required and then i i return back the user to uh the same form to this form okay so that is in case the name is not submitted yeah so i think that is okay we can also check for the template so if the table is submitted to return back yeah so that's it all right so after doing so um we can go ahead and now create our what and create our 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 room maybe we may need to check if the room name is already existing something like that i mean sorry the, the category name is already existing or not you can do that as well however for now i'm just going to go ahead and create so db insert you see it is here just a simple insertion okay so just simply say db db insert okay db insert so you insert into room categories and then you, you pass the name the template the photo so for the photo let us leave it i'll explain it later let me first leave the photo and then the details that's it so if it successfully returns that i can uh, <coughs> i can go ahead and set the success session i don't know <coughs> you can have a variable of a success session and then we will we, we'll be displaying it in the in the header all right so if it does that i can just simply say uh session message so session maybe success message i can say room created successfully okay room created successfully um to make this one simple we can just simply come here in our function and uh we can just uh, simply create a uh, what you call alert message function okay so alert message function i just simply come and put it here on top here so i can just simply say maybe uh, alert message function so i'll just simply come and say a uh, function uh, this one is for displaying okay let's just simply um shall receive a lot so let me say a lot uh message so a lot message it will receive um type of a message um okay to receive type of a message to receive type and then also to receive data okay so that's it so in here you're going just simply to you're going to make a session okay so session and then you can say maybe alert alert what alert 
message message so in this alert message session we are having alert message and then you shall be having the type of a message and then you shall be having the the what the the data okay the data itself all right so after doing so you can see that so you shall just simply be calling this okay so let's go ahead and go back to our create room and then we just simply say alert message so we begin with the type of a message is success and then this will be like a bootstrap class and then you say room created successfully all right so that can be like a, a message room created successfully and then after we will direct back the user to maybe uh room create successfully after doing that then we'll direct the user to uh we'll direct the user we'll direct the user back to the to the what to the list of of rooms okay so you direct the user back to the list of rooms okay so we just need to say uh location and then say admin room categories and then here we exist we exit so here we check just you take the room the user back to the what to the rooms okay so you can see that hope you can see that uh so let's go ahead and try to submit again so you can pause the video and look at this carefully so here we check the method here we check the if the name is coming here we check if the template is set here we go ahead and check the room categories and i mean we go ahead and insert this data to the database in room categories and then here if it is successfully send the message of success and say room created successfully all right so now for example in this case here in this case if it is maybe the the, the name was not set you can go ahead and create as well the alert okay you can go ahead and create the alert and say maybe the name is required something like that so let's go ahead and refresh so if i refresh here so you see it has taken back to the room categories meaning that the room was actually created successfully but we are not seeing the message so we're going to work on the logic of displaying the message so let's try to come here to the room categories you see the room has been created you see it is there so let us work on the logic of displaying the alert message so this alert message we are going to to do what uh to uh we're going to put this alert message in the what in the in the in the header okay in the header all right we're going to put in the header so let's go ahead and do that so we shall just simply come to our header file so our header file is here our header file is there so i'll come here in the bottom here or we can just first do all these things on top here and then we display them at once here after we have done that logic okay so i'll come here on top and check for example maybe i can put here another uh, variable and say has alert has alert message okay so i make it false so how shall you know that is having a alert message we shall just first check if it set the alert function i mean the session alert all right so let me go ahead and do that so i just simply come and say if is set this okay so i don't stop from there again i go ahead and say if is is set the this second variable which is the type right the type then after again i can say if it set if it set the the message okay the message all right i can just set check all of them so yeah so i go ahead and check I go ahead and check if you set the what the message inside this so you know you have a lot message and then you have the type and the message all of them there so if all these are set i can now say that um, a lot message i mean the session is set and i make this one to be true and then i go ahead and say a lot message to be the message that we have got here 
okay to be the message that we have got there all right so after doing so after doing so uh sometime we need to store there an array of errors mm. all right let's just keep it simple right now so here is the alert message so i say has alert is true and then this is the alert message so i can just simply say maybe alert message and just also make it here and make it to be empty yeah. to be empty and also alert type to be empty like this all right so and remember it is header in header so i come here and say alert type equals to the alert type so let's see if this one is now okay so i can just simply say echo and put a pre tag and then do some printer and die here so let's go ahead and refresh you'll see that room has created successfully so that is the alert message okay so you have here the type and so it can successfully reach this level so you can see there you can see that uh so in the alert message we are having the alert we have the message the message itself and then and then we have also uh the type like that so if i come and refresh right now you'll see the message is there and if i come and put here the alert type alert type the type is also success it is there so that is okay so i can just simply remove this die uh so i've kept this and set the session and alert message to be commented until i finish display then we shall come and clear the message after displaying it all right so let's go uh to the bottom of this so let's uh first simply put our what let's first simply put our our alert and see maybe we can say boot boot strap this missable alert aha uh -huh, so see if couple can do that yeah right so yeah that's okay uh so let me explain this so we just simply let me first refresh and i show you what i've done so you see our alert message is there and you can dismiss it okay let me let me explain it okay so here we just simply check if we open our php and say if has alert message and open the cloud bracket here and i put here i close here the php and then i come and close it in the bottom here so if the message is set in between here i want to put the logic of what uh the logic of displaying the alert so i just simply say div alert and then i say alert and i pass the type so this type remember it is a bootstrap what it is a bootstrap uh, it's a bootstrap uh contextual class it can be success it can be danger it can be warning so i go ahead and do that so i go ahead and do that and then after doing so i go ahead and say div and say alert the message type and say alert dismissible fed now fed on show and then i say roll alert and then i go ahead and say btn i put this dismissible alert you can see how it is most is a dismissible button and then after i go ahead and put the what uh the message is itself so by doing so you can pause the video and look at how i've done that so by doing so we shall result with something like this we have the room category and then the created successfully a lot i can be able to close it if i refresh i can be able to see it so that is it uh so i can i can make sure okay that's it i, I hope you can see that so yeah that is okay i think that is okay maybe i can start with the, the p tag if i want uh if i refresh be able to see that is it let me remove the p tag i don't need it but the main point here you're able to see your alert message and you have a close button where you can dismiss it 
So you see, room category created successfully. That's the method you said from the other side through session. So I hope you've understood that. So I save, uh, let me come and now uh, clear. So immediately after we have displayed it, it's supposed to clear. So to clear, we just simply say unset, unset session, and then I clear the alert message in the session. So if I save, if I save, I come and refresh, you see to display one time only, and I refresh again, it disappears. So that is uh, good. So it means that now we can be able to display, I mean, we can be able to save our data into the database. All right, so now let's work on now another important thing, which is the image uploading. We want to work on the logic of uploading the what? The image, because that is very important. That is really, really important uh, in this project that we're going to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and proceed. Uh, so here in the category, we want to be putting the other image and then upload it. All right, so let's see what to do. I uh, will come back to the create room category. So let's go back there. Let's go back there. Let us go back there. Let us go back there. So here we are. So let me go back there. We go back to our create room category, then work on the image uploading so image uploading first of all first of all our form uh what is the create i think this is the one our form we are going to make it uh multi-part okay so we're going to make the form multi-part make the form multi-part okay so here immediately after the post we go ahead and add this word encrypt type multi part stroke form data you add it here otherwise your photos will not upload okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to come here on top so after you've added that and then you have this file so you have here the text input and then the the type is a file so and the name is photo so i'm going to go back now on top here you can just simply come back on top here I'm just going to first play with everything before we even proceed with the saving. So let me come here and say echo pre tag and just simply put print post and then print files and die and close the print and die. So that is it. So I want to display what is being uploaded. So this is the post, this is the post data, this is the file that are being uploaded. So I'll go ahead and refresh and then I do some fake filler. We then come and pick one of the photo from uh, my local database i mean from my 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 storage and then select it and then say uh submit so you see when i submit if i've put this i'll be able to receive this kind of things i'm able to receive this and also this all right so we're going to upload this okay so what we're going to be doing we're going to create a function that uh, We'll be uploading um i don't know we should create a function that uploads the list of files a function that uploads a single file i don't know let me think um let's create a function that uh, uploads a single file okay a function that uploads a single file all right let's do that uh, let's do that. Let's do that. So I'm going to create a function that's going to be uploading a single file. So here, we're just simply going to check if it's set. Just simply going to check if it's set. So I'm going to just simply check if it's set. And then I also say and say again if it's set and it's set um so we know our photo is coming through photo so if that has that is set i'm going to know that that there's a photo that is coming okay you can say die I can just simply do some dd and then display that photo so if i refresh you see that we are able now to display that photo that is going to be uploaded all right so let's go ahead and now um 
some uh, upload the photo uh let's go ahead and upload the photo let's go ahead and upload the photo let's go ahead and upload the photo so um i'm thinking i'm going to approach mm, all right but let's go ahead and upload this photo right okay so um yeah so i think i get the idea so we're going to create now the function for uploading so i'll come here to functions and create a function called file uploading so i'm going to create file uploading function our time is up but uh, let us use four minutes to accomplish at least uploading the files so uh this is a file uploading function uh I just simply made image uploading photo image uploading function yeah so going to deal with images most right so uh so it's going to be receiving the file and the path where it is going to be so let me just receive only the file All right So Copilot will do for me the rest of things, but I can explain, okay? So we get here the file name, we get the file size. Let's first check, I mean, let's first put here uh, uh, an array called response. So response, it will be having a status, um, and status will be successful or failed, and also the message, okay? So I'm going to check if it's an array. The, so whatever will be sent here should be an array. Okay. So I'll just simply first go ahead and check if if is not array. So I just simply do that. I check if is say if if file is not array. I make the message. To be invalid and return back the and return back the response so that's the first checking so i'm going to check if the rest are set check if a uh, file has error so i check if the error is not zero so if the error of this is not zero i go ahead and say file has error and then i return back okay Right, so another thing I can I might need to check check if if uh, is set we can check if the name is set we can check if the if the the temp name is set so those are the important things so you see how I'm checking them so how I'm returning and I can also check if the error is set this one that's if those are set i'll know that okay the file is good to upload all right so after doing so i go ahead and get the name of the file the temp name and then the file size and has the error size let me first delete this so after doing so i go ahead and say allowed so i go ahead and get the the file extension okay i go ahead and get the file extension and uh, so uh, supposed to be the file name i get the file extension uh, so let me just get the extension a better way so start lower and then the file text okay so here i get the file text okay extension like it is dot image dot jpg dot what i get that one okay and then I change it to lowercase if it sometimes might be dot lowercase in lowercase or in uppercase something like that and then after doing so I go ahead and check if this is in our in our accepted files if it is there I go ahead and proceed from here 
All right, so uh, let's first stop from there. Let's come back here and uh, see our and call this function. Okay, call this function. Upload image. So I'll just simply say uh, maybe response equals to upload image. Let's see, and then I give it the file. So let me, let's see what has come. Let's just echo and see what has come. Yep, so if I come and refresh, you'll see nothing has come. Send me that everything is okay here. All right, let's see here. Everything is okay. So now let's go ahead and upload now the image. I check if the file error is not zero. I return that the image has error. And then I go ahead and and uh, get the unique name. So file name is equal to new. And then say unique and then I get the file extension. So if I die with this unique name, I'll see that I'll have some kind of a uh, unique name right they have some kind of a nickname all right so after doing so so the nickname file extension if i refresh again you see i have a, a unique name some kind of unique name okay so i can get after doing so i'll go ahead and uh, however i didn't like the way how we explored this File extension. I want to get okay. So let me do like this. I say maybe explodes equals to I get uh, explodes the file name. Let me just simply say if the explode just than zero and then say invalid name. Otherwise, I just simply come here and say echo. Me put a printer, a printer, and then say printer and die from here. And I see the explodes. So you see the explodes an array and I want for me I'm interested in this last one. So the extension is going to be file extension is going to be the very last uh, part which is going to be uh, explode and the, at the end. So you see that's how I get the last part of the array. Okay. So I get the very last part of the array. So I can now look at our file extension right now. Let me pass here in the die. So that is a file extension, which is PNG, and that is correct. Okay, that is correct. Not this way how they are doing it. I didn't like it. Let me using Copilot. Let me see how it, Copilot does it. See, it's all right. All right. So, all right. Let's do. It. Let's see. Let's see. So that was file extension. You just get the end of that explode. And uh, if I come and refresh, you see our file extension is there in PNG. All right, so that is it. Let me remove this one. Let me remove this. So I have a file extension there, straightforward. Uh, so I check if this extension is not array, and then say the file type was not allowed. Uh, all right, so I get a unique name, and then I add the extension. So if I come and refresh right now, you'll see our name is out a bit okay. Our name is out a bit better with that extension. Okay. So, uh, this name will always be unique. It will try to be as unique as possible so that it does not look like other things. All right, so I think so. Uh, let me go ahead and now upload the file. So, this is the, the new file. So, we're going to create a folder here called uploads. Remember, create that folder. So, let me come here and say new folder. I'm going to call it uploads like this. That is our folder called uploads all right so that's the destination so we go ahead and do upload now the file 
remove the file so to move the file to the upload we just simply say move file and then we go ahead and uh, say if it say move file so you get it from the temp file name this one that you collected here the temp file name okay temp file name and then you put the file destination where the file is going here and then after we go ahead and say um if it successfully execute this it will return true we go ahead and say uh status is true meaning success and then the message we put the file name or the file path something like that so if it fails we just simply put uh file uploaded fail and then this the status remains false and then we return that so that is how to return one of the two of course so that is how we upload so you can pause the video and look at this function very carefully let me move it slowly that's our file upload i move it slowly so you can understand it okay yep so that's our full image uploading so let's try to upload let me commit these changes so if i come and refresh here right now so you see status is one file upload successfully if i come to a fold see the file is here if i come to a fold of uploads you'll see the file has been uploaded successfully all right so that is very good uh now let's go ahead and uh, do that so we check um so you can just simply on top here we can just simply put maybe image maybe say maybe image and make it to be null by default all right so we just go ahead and check now we check the response if is array okay check if is uh, array we check if is array we check if the status is set we check if the 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 status is exactly true and then we just simply say the img got this you see i'm taking if it is an array i'm taking if the status is set and i'm taking if the status is true you see how i'm doing that you can pause the video and look at it and if all those are true i just get whatever in the message and i put it here in the in the i am in the image the image or the uploaded image and make this one to be uh, so if i come here and display it let me just display the image so you should be able to see the image path that has been uploaded all right so let me exit here so if i come and refresh here you see the image path is there so it is uploaded successfully so let me remove this pre tag let me remove all these let me remove all this garbage all right so after doing so i'll just simply cut this function and remove it from top here and then come and put it here when we are about to save when you're about to save here db insert so db insert uh we just pass the image okay by default it will be now so we go ahead and pass here uh the photo okay pass here the photo i hope that is how we saved it in the database the photo so if it is all true i go ahead and pass the what the photo here if it is all true i go ahead and pass the photo so let's save and then refresh so you see product uploaded successfully and if you come to the database you see that you have now two records and the most latest is having the photo that has been uploaded if i come here you'll see that the photo the photo is there so that is how you upload and that's it for today's lecture we shall proceed from there in the next lecture i hope you enjoy i hope you're learning I hope you're trying these things because if you try them, you'll see them making sense. All right, so we meet in the next lecture. That's it for today. It has been an awesome thing. Uh, follow the videos step by step. Uh, keep practicing. Just practice to make sure that you do it. You understand every bit. Uh, when you practice these things many times, you'll see that uh, you're becoming a master and you can start doing your own projects on your at your own pace, at your own time. All right, that's it for today, guys. Unless there's anyone with a question, Duncan, you've been following. Yeah, I've been following. So, how do you see things? I understand.
all right that's good i've uploaded yesterday's video and the previous lecture videos you practice very much very very much you'll be able to see that uh, these things will start making sense to you just practice that's the only way you can become better and once you have these things in your brain ah they'll become yours forever okay thank you okay oh, welcome have a nice day uh just keep practicing that's all i can tell you we meet tomorrow okay